Maloney, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the beginning, they say, is a very good place to start. And there was a moment in the Mana by election back in late 2010 where I knew that politics was going to be a great mixture of challenge and fun. My National Party opponent was the Honourable Hekia Parata, and can I acknowledge her and the late Sir Wittegardner. During that campaign, Hekia and I were being labelled as carpetbaggers, <laughs> outsiders being choppered in to run in the electorate. It was not unfair. To make this point, during a debate in Cannons Creek, some clever bastard decided to ask every candidate, how much time have you actually spent investing in our community? And I fluffed through an answer that would have the current Chris Farfoy with his face in his hands. And then the microphone was passed to the Aotearoa, Aotearoa legalised cannabis candidate, Julian Crawford, who gave one of the best answers I have seen at a local debate. Well, actually, he said, with certainty, I've invested 120 hours of my life in this community. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr Speaker, what a community mana is, now in the hands of my friend, the amazing and talented Barbara Edmonds, who has a long future in that seat, and I'm sure she will make a massive contribution to the country during her tenure. From Linden in the south, encompassing all of Porirua and stretching north to take in the southern part of Kapiti, I was honoured to spend 10 years representing the people of Mana. I, live, I love and miss seeing those people on a daily basis. Can I thank those people who sat on our electoral, local electorate committee during my time? To Lynn Renoff, John Grundy, Jenny Dawson and her husband Jim McAloon, Ken Douglas, Phil Major, Sharon Alborn, Mark James and many more. I also want to thank those who helped me at the very outset, Shane Laulu, Letia Ahoy, the late Murdo McMillan, our Wellington power broker Paul Tollich and John Ryan. John, I know you're going through health challenges. The Labour whānau sends our love to you and yours. I also want to mark a very special community leader in Porirua East, the late Reverend Padema Liasi. He was a staunch supporter of more quality social housing, especially on a piece of land that stood vacant for nearly a decade on what is locally known as the Castle Loop. I'm proud that a Labour government delivered that, but also said that Padema was not there to see those families move into those homes. His daughter, Brenda, is with us today. To Brenda and family, you know how much we loved your dad. He has left a legacy. Mr Speaker, politics is a funny business. I never thought, when I first walked onto this precinct as a junior journalist running errands for Duncan Garner and Mark Sainsbury, <laughs> <laughs> that I'd be an MP, let alone sit around the Cabinet table. So I want to acknowledge Phil Goff, our former leader, who hired me in his media team. I also still served a short stint as his Chief Press Secretary. When preparing for a media interview, Phil, without fail, would ask, yeah, now what I really need is everything on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> on one occasion, the Herald on Sunday wanted to do a colour piece on Phil. True to form, the words came, yeah, now what I need is everything on, and I cheekily fired back, Phil Goff. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment of silence, some awkwardness, and as anyone who knows Phil, raucous laughter. I survived that, who knows what would have happened if I hadn't. Some of my friends from that office are still around, the PM's Chief of Staff, Raj Nana, Richard Tro, our pollster David Talbot and Philippa Bell, just to name a few. And I can't not thank my friend Gordon John Thompson. Before the meeting, when Phil and Annette sounded me out about running for Parliament, I asked GJ what the meeting was about. With a shrewd grin, he told me, I don't know, but whatever they ask, say no. <laughs> Also to John Harvey, I haven't seen you in, in a while, Harve, but I think of you lots. Thanks for supporting me. That brings me to John's old boss and co-conspirator, the Honourable Dame Annette King, and its role in keeping this party needs recognition. In opposition, there was no better camp mother than Annette King. She would dish out political, financial, relationship, career and dental advice to those who did and did not seek it. <laughs> I spent many occasions receiving wisdom from her as she read OIAs, wrote written questions, prepared oral questions and played Candy Crush all at the same time. <laughs> Annette and Ray, thank you. You've given my family so much love. On behalf of me and I and the boys, we love you. Friends away from politics also need to be thanked for letting me know when my head needed to be removed from my backside after spending too much time around this place. My mates Ricky Winter, Vincent Forlini and Joseph Tullier and their wonderful partners are in the gallery today. Thanks lads, and to all the boys from Christchurch, go the Crusaders, we are Rally for Life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to Alicia, I can say that now. <laughs> to Alicia McNeil, Andrew and Jenny Fraser, 
Also, our eight old St. Austell close neighbours, Adam, Nadia, Mitch, Phil, Tino and the crew, thanks for keeping an eye on May and the boys, especially when Theo was young and not well. Misha and Dixon, thanks for your friendship in Greytown. And in Titahi Bay, the Dawsons, Glen Timaho, the crew of the RSA, the bowling club, the surf club, which all had bars, and Kerry Delaney, all need thank you. Mr Speaker, politics is hard, and it's not the easiest place to make friends. But by osmosis, that does happen. Some special mentions need to be made. First, to my mate, Clayton Cosgrove. <laughs> You're as loyal as the day is long. You don't suffer fools, and we've passed judgment together on a number of them. <laughs> <laughs> As whip, I could never find you when you're on house roster. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see you in the house today. <laughs> I apologise for spreading that rumour that you were going into business with a certain former colleague of ours, colleague of ours, but would you put me up to it? <laughs> to Grant Robertson, I struggle to put into words how much I've appreciated your wealth of wisdom, compassion, intelligence, and judgment. I will miss having you in my life on a regular basis. You are our Cullen. To my office neighbour for the last few years, Damien O'Connor, thanks for your direct and friendly wisdom and advice. Same to you, Stu. Love to you and Sarah. And to the Right Reverend, the Honourable Dr David Clark, you've been a great and true friend. To Andrew Little, you rebuilt our caucus after 2014. It was not in a good way, and history needs to know that while that rebuild may not have shown in the polls, you need credit for getting the party to where it needed to be. To other friends who went through those tough times, to Carmel, Chippy, Penny, Kelvin, Jenny Parker, yourself, Mrs Speaker, and others, go well. McAnulty, it's good to see you in the ministry. To my mate to my right, Megan, I will miss our chat times. You have kept me sane and grounded in this weird and wonderful place. I will not miss your constant jibes and willingness to tell anyone that I am the only Pacific Islander alive that is allergic to seafood. <laughs> You've been my best mate and a friendship I know will endure. To my Pacific Caucus colleagues, haka hitai lahi lele. Our Pacific Caucus shows the connection that Labour has to our Pacific community. I'm not sure when we'll get another Tokeloan, but we will, and I'm sure Anahila will be there to take a selfie. <laughs> Prime Minister, can I thank you? You are world class. While many of us were part of the government that implemented our response to COVID, you led it. You stayed ahead of its curve, understood its threat and took the country with us. We are unfortunately seeing everyday families suffering the loss of, of, of Omicron. However, there are people alive today because of you, Prime Minister. You took on expert advice, trusted the science and led brave and difficult decisions. Prime Minister, I have had one outstanding issue though since Pacifica in 2012. I know you remember. <laughs> I said I'd donate $500 to your campaign if you got up and danced on stage with a group. I never thought you'd do it, and you did. <laughs> Prime Minister, I know it's been 10 years, but earlier this week, I donated $500 to the Mike <laughs> Albert <laughs> LEC. <laughs> That's the receipt. I thought about adjusting it for inflation, but... <laughs> <laughs> Here, my final note to you is to say it was a deep honour to accompany you on our visit to Tokyo. It meant so much to the people on the islands and here at home. The time on the HMNZ Otago will have to go down as a highlight of my last five years. Prime Minister, the experience of going back to the place my mother and father were born and raised meant so much, and to do it accompanying you as our PM was next level. You took the climate change concerns of young children in Tokyo and amplified them in the United Nations General Assembly. Jacinda, I will miss being part of your team. Lots of love to you, Neve and Clark. Mr Speaker, it's obvious that being a minister is a massive privilege, but it's also a responsibility that arrives with force. Back in 2017, I was still sitting amongst movie boxes in the first 24 hours of government when then Civil Defence Director Sarah Stuart Black, or Norm as we know her, and the ever-ready Civil Defence Private Sec Stefan Weir arrived and, excuse my French, Mr Speaker, scared the shit out of me. One minute I was stressing about cardboard boxes, the next minute two strangers calling me minister were telling me that if the big one happens, we're, going to, we're coming to get you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. <laughs> I want to acknowledge the emergency management sector. You are all great people. I'm proud of the work this government has done to reform and resource emergency management. Mr Speaker, the changes and responses that the government made in the commerce space I am also proud of. 
from introducing market studies, cracking down on loan sharks, and better ensuring financial advice uh, suits consumers. I thoroughly en enjoyed engaging with everyone in that sector, especially as we all banded together when COVID hit. Mr Speaker, immigration at the best of times is always a challenging portfolio. I don't wish the circumstances of the last two years on any other immigration minister. Closing our border was the right thing to do. It kept New Zealand safe, but it created difficulties and very few, if any, levers that didn't pose heightened COVID risk. I'm proud of the 2021 residence visa, our rebalance, and our response to humanitarian crises in Afghanistan and, U and the Ukraine. I'm also, I'd also like to thank the Hort sector for the way we've engaged over the last two years. Yes, it was difficult at times, but it was also uh, respectful. Mr Speaker, I want to wish my colleague Willie Jackson all the best as he steers a new public media entity towards his new journey. It's been a piece of work that I'm proud of and must be done. To the naysayers on both the left and the right, you need to get with the times. You also need to realise that public media is for all the public and not just those who like to listen to the conundrum. The real, <laughs> the real conundrum is this. If public media doesn't change, the very people who need trusted sources of news, information and their identity won't have it available to them as previous generations have. We know, the, we know that right now those audiences are not engaging with public media. In the new future, the orchestra, the opera, Otara and Oxford will all be at home on the new platforms on the new media entity. One of my favourite experiences in the broadcasting portfolio was a Friday afternoon visit to the offices of NZME in Auckland. I was given a tour of the newsroom and then found myself in the Radio Hodaki office at happy hour. After obliging an offer of an ice-cold Wakachangi beer, I was invited into the studio and offered another ice-cold beer, which I must admit, Mr Speaker, was going down very well after a busy week. They gave me a guitar to take part in an on-air competition, which unbeknown to me was won by an old school friend in Christchurch. But my most vivid memory was of the immense unease of my broadcasting private sec, feeling like she was losing control of the situation and her minister. I left after the second ring of Changi, despite being offered a third. <laughs> right, the final stretch, more thank yous to all my former electorate office staff. Special mention to Jeff Hayward, Naomi Sienia, Brenda Liasi and Mareka Barnard to all the amazing private secretaries who have had the pleasure of working with over the last five years. We have been blessed with our public services best. You are all amazing. To all the political staff from past and present, to Esther, Lindsay, Peter Stevens, Kurt McLaughlin somehow snuck onto the list, as his Sally Page, <laughs> Mareika Barnard again, and more recently, the talented Tabitha McMaster, Alexi Grimstrup and Joe Ramsey. Thank you and sorry for when I forgot to or willfully didn't take your wise counsel. <laughs> to my long-serving electric office extraordinaire and SPS, Miranda Liverpool. Miranda, you've put up with me for 10 years, and I think I saw a hint of relief last Monday when I announced my resignation. Love to you and your, to Don and your amazing kids. To Matt Swan and James Bajant, two of the best men an MP could ever hope for, from young members, campaign powerhouses, MP support and their ministerial advisors. Your enthusiasm during street corner meetings, sign waving, putting up election signs and sausage sizzles was epic. On one day of campaigning, I recall there being at least a dozen sausage sizzles that we had come into close contact with. As the day wore on, we had dutifully and increasingly reluctantly purchased the small goods in support of good causes. <laughs> Early that evening, we thought we were done until we pulled up to Pack and Save Potidoa and right in front of our car park was sausage sizzle number 13. <laughs> what happened next was pure campaign farce as I looked back at them and said, which one of you bastards is eating this sausage? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you're a great EA, and James, the last three years having you as my ministerial advisor has been one of the pleasures of being a minister. To my family, to my siblings, Lance, Jason, and Maria, and your amazing families, your children, Charlie, Jess, your partner, Denzel, and your beautiful daughter, my grandniece, Lauren, you've always been there to support me. Thank you. To mum, I love you. My mum is a habitual watcher of Parliament TV. <laughs> if I was absent from the house during question time, I would be not uncommon to get a text from mum, where are you? <laughs> and if I got told off by the speaker, mum might message, what did you say? <laughs> Sorry, mum. We lost dad in 2013. We miss him every day. It would have been great to have to lean on him for advice, especially in the last five years. To my hopefully, hopefully soon to be in-laws, Chris and Christine, Emma, George, Sam, Maggie, thank you so much for loving and supporting us. George and Emma, you're a wonderful uncle and auntie. And Chris and Christine, you're a wonderful nanny and tramps to the boys. Your home in Pahongana has been an awesome place to get away from politics 
and we look forward to spending more time on the farm. To George, Fred and Theo, three young men I love so much. I hope the excitement of being around me doesn't rub off too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hold out much hope. I'm so proud of you. George, you're an amazing young man. George wrote me a note the day after the 2017 election. It said, hard luck, Dad, you still have the specials. <laughs> George was right. The specials came through. Thank you, George. <laughs> Fred, I love you so much. You were the first person to text when the PM announced my leaving politics. He said, congratulations, Dad, love you. Fred, your dad was so nervous at that moment. But you cut through all of that. You were in for us that I'd made the right decision. Thank you. To Theo, happy birthday for yesterday. Yay! You are five, school is cool, and so are you. <laughs> I have threatened that I will come to school every day with you as my new job. <laughs> but I promise I won't do that. George, Fred and Theo, you're a wonderful reason to make this hard decision to leave politics. To May, you're an amazing and wonderful mum to Theo and stepmum to George and Fred. Your support over the last eight years has been massive. This year, we were meant to get married. COVID got in the way. Let's do that soon. I'll be home more now, and I'm worried that you'll change your mind. <laughs> if you marry me, I promise I will stop calling our joint account a flat account. <laughs> well, Mr Speaker, that, that is it. A few final thanks to VIP. Thank you so much for looking after us. You see every side of ministerial life, but especially you look after your, our families. It has meant so much. I've enjoyed our journeys and chats to escape politics. To everyone in this building that makes that make things tick, who protect us, feed us, fix the things we break, the clerk's office, the house staff, and the cabinet office. To our parliamentary rugby team and cricket team, thanks for the good times. Bash, good luck for the next couple of days. To all MPs in this house, thank you. It's been f f fun, fierce, and fair. To all my Labour colleagues, you are my tribe and I wish you all the best. It has been a roller coaster ride, an honour and a privilege. And I look forward to new beginnings and I'm thankful for the experiences of serving in New Zealand's Parliament. I'm not sure if my mate from the Leg Legalised Cannabis Party has done any more community service. <laughs> but as I finish today, I have calculated that I have served 105,233 hours in this House and to the Labour Party. And during that time, Mr Speaker, even the bad times were good. To all, have a happy Matariki. Hakehetai, hakehetai, hakehetai lahilele. Thank you.